and we are live hey everybody i'm so excited to be here with katie vernon <laughs> one of my artists i'm so excited hey katie hi lila it's good to be here so good to see you before i introduce you i want to tell you that she's going to be talking about i'm going to ask her what she's working on right now her favorite illustration project ever what she feels makes a great art director and she's worked with so many she'll have some really interesting points and tips um, we're going to hear what her creative process is like which will be so interesting she has a wonderful um, bunch of images to show us that's all about her process and about how her personal work has led to jobs it's fascinating you're going to enjoy it um oh look at that we already have a jillion attendees if i press that button Yay. she is going to talk about tips on working from home and she is her how old is your daughter she is almost eight she's almost eight and her favorite movie dream gig and what she would be if she wasn't an illustrator so we have lots of cool cool things to show you and talk to you so let me introduce my wonderful beloved artist katie vernon katie vernon is an in-demand artist living in the mountains of flagstaff arizona she's happily been represented by lilla rogers studio for almost five years katie has had the pleasure of working with great clients including anthropology ikea the washington post porsche National Geographic and Roger Laborde. She is staying sane during this crazy time by rearranging furniture, playing Yahtzee. I'd like to do that too. And going on lots of bike rides with her family. So please welcome Katie. Hey, hey Katie. Hello. How are you holding up right now in this, <laughs> this, this crazy time? It is crazy times, but doing okay. Just trying to take each day as it comes and mm -hmm. You know, stay safe, stay sane. Yeah, stay busy. Stay busy. So, Katie, what are you working on right now? Well, thankfully, I've got a couple projects that I'm still working on. So I have some more greeting cards coming out, um, a map, and a kid's book project. Oh, so that you can't That's reveal. It. That's fantastic. Yeah. Can you say where the map is of? Sure. It's actually of Galena, Illinois, which is right next to Dubuque, Iowa, which, Iowa, which is where I lived. I lived there for two years. So, yeah. yeah. And what's amazing is um, your map of Dubuque you did for my maths class, right? One of the yeah. early classes I saw that I'm like, I love her. I love this. It was beautiful, original, just, I love that piece. So look at that. Thanks. Yeah. I think that piece has gotten me more maps, map work than that one piece. I mean, just mm -hmm. get so many maps because of it. It's so great. I yeah. love it. Um, okay. I know this is an impossible question, but yes. what was your very favorite illustration project so far and you don't have to say favorite because i know you don't want any of your art directors who may be watching to like you, you know pick favorite you don't want to pick favorites but let's no. just say one that comes to mind that you really like um i'll pick this one because also i have things to show for it but working on the practical magic book i love that book with running press was yeah. so fun the illustrations were just I love that. Yeah, I love that one. So fun to do, really magical. And they then took it and, you know, spun off different products. So we got this little gem kit. It comes with little gems. No, oh, I love that so much. And a tiny little book. I love tiny books. And a pack of greeting cards and a pack of notebooks. Ah. So fantastic. Can you show us those um, greeting cards? Did yes. they fall? Everything's falling. Let's see. <laughs> so we've got, and they were just images from- From the book. Inside the book. 
So beautiful. I love this one. I love that. I love that. You, one of the signature, you had a very signature blue and gray. And that was another thing years ago, five, six, seven years ago, whenever we first saw each other. Uh -huh. um, you used gray in a way that people were not using it yet. Mm -hmm. And it really, I remember that very clearly. It's interesting. Okay. Um, so tell us, Katie Vernon, you've worked with so many art directors. What makes a great art director? How do you like to work? And we have art directors listening. So maybe, and if the people are newer to art directing illustration, mm -hmm. what advice would you have for those folks? Well, thankfully, I've, I have worked with just really wonderful art directors across the board. Um, and I think the important thing to note, like, it's a working relationship, you know, so you need good communication. Um, and just a general friendliness is always nice. Yeah. You know, I don't mind if like an nice. art director like pushes me further. I, that, I welcome that. I also love when they're like, do your thing. It kind of, as long as they're friendly and responsive. Yeah, Mara said the same. Mara said the same thing last time, oh, you know, yeah. just like being nice. <laughs> it's true. I remember when I was an illustrator, I could, art directors, this, the top art directors could get me to do anything because they just knew how to work me. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew how to charm <laughs> me. They knew how to just, oh, Lila, we love your work so much, but the editor, you know, they're just nuts, whatever, but they want you to do blah, blah. So I'm wondering yeah. if you could do in your brilliant style, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, sure, okay. You know, could you just make those changes? Sure, okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's great. Absolutely. Um, everybody always wants to know what, a, what, what the, an artist's creative process is. I don't know if you can sum it up. Sure. But what would you say your creative process is? Um, so for me, I really need kind of a low stakes entry, um, if that makes sense. Like, I like to be messy and playful at the start. Mm. Um, I use really, I use like cheap mixed media paper. I tend to use just a single color ink. Um, and then I can take this and scan it in, clean it up in Photoshop, and then I take it to my iPad and in Procreate, I can further refine it and add details. Oh, that's so, so gorgeous. You know, you can see that. Okay, so the, the blue one is what you did by hand, and then right. the other one, is that what you did in Procreate and you printed that out? Right, so this is the final. Um, wow. And everything's kind of colorized in Photoshop and, mm -hmm. um, but it makes it so that I, I feel like I can be less precious at the start. Mm -hmm. I'm not creating a fully final, fully realized illustration, um, that if I spill a little ink, if I make a little mistake, mm -hmm. I'd have to start over. So that's what I like to do. Cause it gives me the best of both worlds of the hand like feeling the hand, the paintbrush mm -hmm. strokes, and then also um, easy editing. I can easily put things in layers and change colors. So great. So, you yeah. know, it, your style is, call, is loose. It's free. It looks very alive. And that's such a wonderful tip for artists to hear how you do that. You, you know, just use a lot of like you said, mixed media paper, it's not super expensive, right? Like maybe yeah. a pad. Yeah. And it's not like the, you know, $8 Arsh, 100% cotton rag, French. And you're like, eat, you know, <laughs> oh my yeah. God, it hurts. Yeah. yeah. And, this and then way, I just, I'll use, you know, I'll have a whole stack of half used and I'll play on the back and it's just. And then what you do is, then you just pick your best and scan it in. That's so that's great. Right. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, that's pretty cool. So tell us about your tips on working from home with your seven-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and your husband who's working from home. 
any advice because now so many people are working from home that haven't in the past worked yeah. from home perhaps and they've schlepped everything out of their office in the building wherever as our directors editors designers to their home mm -hmm. what advice would you give them well i think keeping your expectations pretty low <laughs> is a good is is a good way to start you know make a list instead of three things that you're going to get done during the day just get one thing done you know mm -hmm. and um i know for me carving making sure i carve out the time mm -hmm. like i have to prioritize and sometimes that means i have to set you know my daughter up with her ipad for an hour and that's okay <laughs> she's oh, fine yeah you know so i think I just yeah, keeping expectations realistic yeah. and not getting down about if there's a day that you just weren't feeling it because you have those days even when it's not crazy, you know? Right. It's so true. There's some days that just aren't as productive. Yeah. One of the things I do is I procrastinate on something else. Mm -hmm. I don't think of it as procrastination, but I kind of tune into what what is my mood? Is it very sort of linear, desk worky? Do I feel like writing? Matt's courses, do I feel like doing something for the agency, meeting with the, my t agents team? Um, mm -hmm. You know, do I feel social? Do I feel inter like what's the vibe? And then I can really give 100% for that particular project. Absolutely. Now, do you, you have so many projects on the books. Do you like carve out like does everybody in your family know you're working from this time to that time every day or is it just hey see ya i'm working or it's a little bit more loosey-goosey than a strict schedule um mm -hmm. thankfully my studio is inside our house so i can just run in here if i feel like i could get 10 15 minutes done of something wow. um whether it's emails or just Etsy orders or just something like I can mm -hmm. kind of sneak in here. Um, That's great. Right in there. Okay. Every now everybody wants to know what, what movie do you recommend during lockdown? <laughs> What's a good movie or show? A recommendation um, of a show. Oh man. I, my pencil. An really. Antiques Roadshow is the show. <laughs> yeah. It is. The <laughs> That's my husband's. <laughs> take me away <laughs> nothing matters i mean it's like it puts me to sleep it gets me i love i yeah antiques roadshow is the show mm -hmm. um for the movie i have i mean my favorite movie it's kind of cliche but the princess bride you know mm. it's just such a good movie that's a good movie great great little like um classic riffs and yeah. right where they say those things. That's cool. Okay, good. now, yeah. Now, um, a dream gig, if you, if I as your agent could take a magic wand and get you any gig you wanted in the whole wide world, anything, what would it be? Are you listening, Susan and Kim? <laughs> this has always been a hard, um, you hard pick question. A few. I don't know why it's a hard question to answer, but um, I've never done, a, like a proper children's book. So I'd love to write and illustrate a children's book. Well, that's very interesting you say that because yeah. I have a scoop announcement, by the way, um, Susan and Kim and the, all the team here. Um, by the way, people, next week, our webinar will be with... Um, a bunch of my artists that are working with me on the beta of my kid book pitch. They're beta testing, but it's really more than beta testing. They're actually going to be using it. And um, they are, uh, we'll be meeting every, we were, it was going to be live. They were going to fly out here and stay in my home and gardens and I would feed them and put them up and mentor them while they work and give them sort of uh, a protected time to work on their children's book uh, pitches. And what happened was, as you know, they can't come. So 
we're doing it virtually and we're meeting every every day um, and on Zoom and we'll chat and show and they'll work and we'll meet more and so forth. And my newest announcement is that Katie Vernon has agreed to join us next week too because she and I have been working on her incredible book pitch and we're like, you should be in the residency. So she will be in and it's um, Mara, Bambi, Kellyanne, uh, Dalton, Kendra, and Erica Root, and now Katie Vernon. So it's incredible. Art directors, if you're listening, we contact me if you would like to get on the last day, which is Saturday. It starts Monday, last day is Saturday. We are going to have a private showing of the artist's work. They're going to um, all be on screen like this and show their work and talk about their ideas. And we would love anyone just email me lilla at lillarogers.com if you are a bona fide art director that works in the children's realm. Could be even toys, games, anything, but clearly children's books. And um, we're really, really, really excited about that. I, I mean, for me as an agent, it's a dream come true. And I will tell you right now that the art coming out of that will be brilliant. And with my course, um, Susan says, one proud mama watching. Hi, um, <laughs> and I'm really, this is the course. So I'm really excited about it, which actually um, goes live in October. And if you're interested, it's on the makeartthatsells.com website if you want to sign up. It's going to be great. Um, so, oh, I have a poll. Before we get to Katie's artivities and a show of her work, and then Q&A, um, I'm going to pop up this poll. Let's see if I can do it. Launch poll. Oh, nope. Forget it. It's not on there. Forget the poll. Um, so let's see. Oh, Brenda, I'm glad you're excited for the class. That's nice. So let us look at, shall we look at your artivities? First, I'll show it on screen. Okay. So we're going to share this. And so now everybody can see that. And we just got little. So this is the, um, let me explain the artivities book. I asked the artists, we had a great idea to ask our artists to come up with ideas for things that you could do with your kids or yourself. Um, Katie, help me out for what? What is this like cool project? Yeah, like just easy, fun little things that you can do with whoever's at home, kids, mm. you know. Yeah, I'm, and I'm gonna do them all. Anyway, it's like 26 pages. We have so many amazing, amazing projects in here. And not only is it a super wonderful thing so that many of our artists contributed to, but we think it's a great promotional vehicle too for art directors, you, you know, take a look, see these fantastic ideas. Katie's about to demonstrate how the finger puppets so we work. we got the cuddly cuttlefish. That's so great. Let me put you back on, on big. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's see. How do I, oh, stop share now. Okay. Now you can see Katie. So we'll do both. We got the little worm and the pineapple. There's a worm <laughs> face on her finger. So great. Cuttlefish. Anyway. So wonderful. That's so great. Oh, let's see. People are commenting. What are they saying? Let's make this bigger. Move this up. Um, so brilliant, so brills, that's so adorable. I have to have that for my nine-year-old, so cute, cute, great ideas. Um, <laughs> such a unique idea, so fun. Oh, that's great, thank you, everybody. So um, now we are going to go to, we're going to look at Katie's beautiful work here. Let's pop that in. So, are you, in, Good, you're seeing the Katie. Katie, Lilla's webinar with special guest Katie Vernon. Katie, you tell me when you want me to turn a page, okay? All right, you can go ahead and turn. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, so I just made this as a way to show some of my work that um, started from personal pieces. Um, and I kind of noticed that it fell into two categories, one being, we can go to the next slide, actually. Okay. Whoops. Pink. Okay. So when okay. just a, a personal piece catches a client's eye. Um, next. Yep. So this was something I did like six years ago that a client saw um, and it turned into, we can go to the next. So it turned into this modern kind of twall food related um, patterns. I'm going to go back and show this is the personal piece mm -hmm. and she was hired from that to do this and now she's going to hold up the, the bag. So this was a whole identity campaign for King's, um, King's Market, which is a grocery chain in uh, the, on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And so these patterns are being used throughout the store. Um, they just sent these co the coffee bags, which are amazing. Um, and that was a really fun project. That was one of those projects you didn't even dream like you would get. It's so kind of, I could never have dreamed of it. But, right. Like um, who think, yeah. Well, and they probably, so they saw this mm -hmm. and they, did, did they reference this when they hired you? Yeah. And where did you show it on Instagram or did we pitch it? It was in my portfolio on your site. Um, this is a, it's a really old piece of work that I still love. <laughs> well, but. it was, I remember when you did this and it was like, whoa, so original, so quirky. It's like these great tools in black and white. It was just, ra that's the gray we were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then they hired that. Okay, next slide. Sure. I love this. So this is, this is kind of an example that um, shows also a bit of process. So the first piece was just a black and white ink drawing that I did in on one of these, you know, mixed media pieces of paper. And it turned into um, an assignment actually for one of your editorial map. I think it was a boot camp way yeah. back in the day. And then I turned it into this pattern which then you can go to the next amazing anthropology saw and picked up and you know i i added a couple extra things a couple more animals um but basically it was straight from you know a personal piece that i had done so That's so and what an incredible incredible assignment oh let me show you that one my anthro the anthro pillow that oh yeah anthro commissioned mm -hmm. and I love that her signature on back it's very squishy I love that <laughs> pillow okay next page sure. so these were all things that I posted on Instagram and um, let's see the top one was turned into a a Roger Laborde card mm. and they were a client already so um, I think they kind of trusted that something a little bit more abstract and quirky could work mm. um, they also this is the bottom one that they turned into a happy birthday so they had you make these vertical mm -hmm. cool. um, and then that the Father's Day one <laughs> And then so it turned good. into, it went from just the Father's so Day into Mother's Day. Happy Mother's mm. Day, Mom. Um, <laughs> and then into pets and, mm. but this was just, this was straight up a sketch that I posted on Instagram from my sketchbook. And what's so um, great about your work is that you always surprise, you delight. There's always, like, if you look at the dad card on the, the screen here, the, the there's dad pop daddy papa father dada mike pa and zorb <laughs> i mean zorb you know it's like just she 
gives herself license to be quirky, to be funny, to be herself. And it's appealing. And even if the client doesn't always use that, um, you, what's this? Somebody's raising their hand. What? Oh, um, it, it, you have to put that kind of work out to get the kind of work you want. You have to. Yeah, I would say that probably 90% of my client work isn't necessarily quirky at all. You know, it's right. It's just beautiful. But that Barely. 10% that does want the quirkiness, like mm -hmm. it really works out too. So, and then we've right. got this guy. Ooh. This was um, Tag. Did a oh, I love that. I never got one. <laughs> and then the eyeball was turned into a line with um, milk Copenhagen and this is my daughter's t-shirt <laughs> that is so great I love that I'll it's be so, so sad when she outgrows it yeah well you could make it into a pillow for her yeah. for when she goes to college you know or Aww. something for a bedroom an embroider yeah. oh I was gonna wear my Katie Vernon I your <laughs> your punch needle eye. Yeah. I was gonna um, wear one too. <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay, let should I go to the next one? Mm -hmm. Oh. All right. So the second way that plain and just having more fun and freedom in your work, especially your personal work. So experiments with materials and methods keep you you and your work fresh. I think for me this is so important. Mm -hmm. It's just like keeps me inspired. It keeps me always um, just trying new things. And I think that's, mm -hmm. that's part of developing, you know, and growing as an artist. So I agree a hundred percent. It's, and you know, your job, everyone's job in any creative field really is you have to learn how to stay fresh and motivated mm -hmm. to keep your clients interested too. Right. So and you you naturally do that. Next page. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> you did this for Matt's. I did. That was before I was repped by you. Yeah, um, and I was like, I have to take her on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, and this was this was made by just playing with new methods of making, and I feel like you can see how that totally influenced like the anthropology and illustrations um but that inkiness and um playing around with icons that i could rearrange and like a, i don't know it, something really clicked with this one that then transferred into my work like permanently it made a permanent dent in how i made artwork um, yeah, it was a real breakthrough piece, mm -hmm. I think, for you. And, um, you know, it's just very restrained, very, very controlled in that she's using that blue black color so much with just a little red orange, a little yellow green, very controlled in a good way. Then, of course, her watercolor, the drawings of these, what are they, yaks or something or goat? They're I uh, sheep, ibex, horned, horned goats. creatures, <laughs> goats, and, and these goats with these beards and the horns, and just you, as an illustrator, you need to curate the imagery like a stylist. You don't just draw any old thing, and that she chose these. This was like, oh, twenty fourteen. Mm -hmm seven years ago like six years ago oh yes yeah, six <laughs> <laughs> um not doing good math today seven uh, six years ago which and now it's as fresh as could be it was very original very innovative and it's still as fresh as could be okay next page sure love this and so these are what i feel like are more recent experiments that are just you know starting to play with a little bit more mixed media a little bit more paint texture beyond 
um, like ink and watercolor. Mm. Um, I, I obviously went through like a color explosion thing here. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> and also like you treat each plant in a different way. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's like scribbly lines. Sometimes it's layers of gouache or something and thick and opaque and other times it's see-through. You know, it's just very, it, there's just such imagination and, and originality. And those rainbows, it's really hard to do rainbows in a cool, fresh way and they're beautiful. And then the dragon, of course. <laughs> so. We can go to the next. And it's really, it's subtle how some of these like experiments and playful things can end up in client work. But even just, so this is for, um, this was one for this, one of my newer books that came out. Mm -hmm. That's, it's 50 plant inspirations, quotes. And then it's kind of a cool thing. It comes with a little, um, it comes with a frame. I don't want to pop mine out because I want to, I only have one copy. But you can then pop out the, I love that one. I love that one. Look at the vessel that the plant is in and her lettering and that plant. And so even just that little bit of extra texture, I started, you know, incorporating more mm. in the sky. It's really interesting to see how you made that mushy piece and then it affected your art. Okay, should I go back to the, that screen? Um, we might be done. I, maybe. Are we done? Do I have no, one more? I think oh. there's one more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes it doesn't lead to anything, and it's just for creative yet. fulfillment, you know? And then you say yet, and it's so true. You know, the other thing is you want to make pieces that are your taste level that are maybe ahead of trend, maybe aren't so-called commercial right now, mm -hmm. but they're going to get you the coolest jobs. They're going to get you the really innovative projects. And, and I found when I was an illustrator, I would do things I knew like, nobody's going to buy this now, but maybe in the future. And, and art directors would say to me, Lilla, we held on to this and we were just waiting for the right project for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what, um, like, I'm sure a lot of these will get you and continue, like, as you already do, you already get really cool work. So that is, um, let's go back to the two of us. Whoa. That is so exciting that, oh, I love that. Wasn't that a great PDF? That was so great. Um, so we have a few minutes for questions. If anybody has any questions, you can type them in on the chat panel and I can take a look. Um, in the meantime, let's see in the Q&A, sorry, in the Q&A panel. Um, so Annette C. Webb says, how did they see the personal piece from earlier you were talking about? Mm -hmm. How did clients on, on our website, the agency website, I'm sure the agents pitch the work all over. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get a fair bit of Instagram, um, people coming because they saw it on Instagram, but a lot of it is because I send you those personal images that then get spread far and wide. Yeah. So. Um, La, La Delina says, love your style. Could one work with ink splashes only in Procreate or does one need Photoshop? If that makes sense. So I'm not sure if this is the answer to this question, but for I know some people are really good at using Procreate and making it look like real ink. And I'm just not there yet with it. So I always still do kind of like analog, real ink on paper, scan it in and then bring it to Procreate. Um, yeah. And some people do, I mean, I think Procreate and Photoshop are very similar in what they can offer for mm -hmm. tools, mm -hmm. but nothing really replaces like certain things that you get by doing it by hand. Hmm. Fair enough. I agree with you too. I, I mean, well, I have artists 
sometimes I didn't even know that they were, it was completely procreate. That's true. No, it's amazing. I like making a mush with tools, but so this is by, uh, it doesn't have a name. It's a number. How were you able to narrow down your style? That's the million dollar question. Did you feel there were illustration styles you still liked, but not the official Katie Vernon style? Hmm. Um, oh, I get super like in love with other people's styles that aren't mine all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think it comes down to, I really, I, I do play a lot. I try a lot of things and I think my style, you know, kind of reflects that. Um, but anything that doesn't feel good, I get rid of. So if the pr something in the process I just don't like, I get rid of it because I don't want to end up having to do 50 illustrations for a book in a process that I don't like, that doesn't feel good to me. So, so, so you edit, you curate your yeah. own work. It's so brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, by the same person, 692166 writes, how do some pieces come out with your name, like the anthro pieces versus just a credit or maybe nothing? And she's talking about. Yeah. Um, it just depends on the company, the, it just depends. It's always yeah. great if it can have your name. And we do as agents, you know, ask for that mm -hmm. and encourage it. Um, Kristen, Taylor Kristen Davis says, how did you get your start as an illustrator? How did you transition into doing it full time? Oh. That's your memoir right there. <laughs> um, I actually, I studied illustration and graphic design at um, University of Dayton in Ohio, which is not an art school. And I studied it and then I decided I didn't want to be an illustrator. <laughs> and then I had, for about 10 years, I had a bunch of different jobs. I was a florist. I always kind of did illustration on the side a little bit. And then it got to be time when I didn't want to work for anyone else, really. I didn't you know, I wanted, we wanted to start a family. I wanted to work from home mm -hmm. and I just kind of dove in. Um, I found your courses and that helped tremendously get me mm -hmm. just started rebuilding my portfolio. Um, and back, like I had gotten some jobs before because of blogs, but blogs aren't really as much a thing now, right. <laughs> you know? So it just, it's always changing what's going to get you in front of the most people. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's TikTok right now. I don't know what TikTok is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's by Wendy McKinnon. What work did you do before art illustration? Um, I was a florist. I worked at an old fashioned book bindery, um, cool. which was pretty cool. Um, I did a lot of retail, just, my husband and I lived in a school bus for a bit, so we traveled. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna skip around, we have lots of questions. Oh, so 692166 is Anna Bianchi from Matt's. Anna, nice to see mm. you. Um, let's see, Judy Pelt says, once you've created your work and scan it, how do you, Oh, no, sorry. I want to do this one. Um, Ro Rocio Mariposa. Hi, Katie. Can you talk more about your creative breakthrough with the blue-gray goat piece with the plates? Sure. Um, so with that one, I went back to how I like to work. And actually, I really, I looked at um, the fact that I was a florist for multiple years. And I thought about how, you know, when you're a florist, you take individual pieces and you arrange them. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, why don't I just do that with my illustration? Why don't I just paint individual pieces mm -hmm. and then be able to arrange them like a florist would until it's a pleasing, you know, what I wanted. I love um, that. So that, that is so good. 
Because yeah. yeah, it's like you're thinking instead of I must make a picture. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, arranging. Yeah, that's cool. I bet that's and that's just what it's just what worked for me and my personality. You know, I think everyone's a little different, and thank goodness. <laughs> um, but that's there's, what worked for me. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Jay Park writes: How long do you usually spend on a project, like an editorial piece for a magazine? or for a pattern like for anthropology? It just depends. I mean, usually editorial is like a maybe two week turnaround and that's like two full days of work, three full days. It just depends. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of think time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of think Sometimes time. we kind of forget about that the like behind the scenes just processing and mm -hmm. um but that's all that's i usually go thrifting during that time but now i can't oh yeah but that's um, okay yeah it will happen it'll <laughs> it come will back happen. um judy peltz writes once you've created your work and scan it how do you finish it with what digital programs and equipment um i kind of clean everything up in Photoshop mm -hmm. then I bring it over to my iPad Pro and use Procreate and then I bring it back over to Photoshop and totally finish it there if I need to rearrange things or um, there's probably an easier way but I have chosen <laughs> a multi-step process and that's fine. <laughs> um, let's see Martina writes, you, your style is so original, Katie. Love it. Every piece is, has so much to tell. How do you find inspiration? Mm. Uh, well, I, like I said, I go thrifting a lot. I think I get a lot of inspiration just looking at Vintage. other people's old stuff. Um, and I do, I do find inspiration on Instagram and Pinterest, but then I, there are moments and days where I recognize that it's no longer inspiration and it's maybe a little bit of like icky feeling of, I don't know if it's jealousy or just like, why didn't I think of that? Or, and that's when you just turn it off, you step yeah. away and you yeah. know, I can't look at other people's work. <laughs> so, um, that's, a, you know, I think everyone at every stage deals with, there's always somebody who's doing something you would be you would like to be doing mm -hmm. whatever or y you would like to do it that way or something and how do you deal with those feelings of envy or wishing do you go to a place of self-deprecation or do you have a way of processing i know you don't self-deprecate because you wouldn't be as successful as you are <laughs> if you got if you stayed stuck so i know that um I think I honestly, it's like I have trained my brain just to turn it off. Just, mm -hmm. I go take a walk. I do the dishes. You know, I do, I just do something else mm -hmm. because the longer you're in that state of mind, the easier it is to get stuck there. Right, right. So, so you, it, you just have to like cut it off and switch gears. Focus. So you refocus, you go boom. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can use affirmations too. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do that? Like, um, or say things to yourself? No. Well, the, the saying that I say actually to my daughter a lot that I know that is very internalized for myself is comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we can't get jealous. We can't compare. If we want to have joy in our own life and in our own work, mm -hmm. comparing yourself to others is just going to like wipe that out. It you know? really does. Yeah. <laughs> you have to keep finding ways to be joyful, which mm -hmm. isn't always easy. Mm -hmm. And I think any very accomplished artist has found that, has found the technique. A nice hawk flying by. It's a good omen. We always have wildlife when I'm doing a live. It's crazy. Okay, thank you, Hawk. Uh, the woodpecker, the great blue heron that other day. Um, 
it, so so reframing and getting to a place where you stay positive and joyful so key here's a really good question Annie, Annie McGee writes what tip would Katie give her past self when she was starting out what would you tell early Katie stick with it I mean not that I didn't stick with it but I think just like it takes time you know and it takes hours and putting in the effort and pushing yourself it's that it is that kind of whole 10,000 hours thing it's like right. you just got to put in the time and it can take you know I was not an overnight successful illustrator I was mm -hmm. making art for a decade you know before mm -hmm. I was able to move to full time so yeah yeah and, and and that's another thing any successful person has found a way to stick with it and how do you stick with it for me it's about getting excited about things i just what am i really excited about working on and then i work on that and i'm very fortunate i didn't start out with having a staff so i had to do everything myself till i made more money and as i made more money i could hire more and more people and so i can delegate just as you delegate to your agency the billing, the invoicing, the negotiating, the contract, the promoting, the all that stuff. So you can just focus on what you're passionate about. And I mean, yes. that's the, the ideal. Okay, let me just see if there's one more. Okay, we'll end with this. What other crafts and hobbies interest you? Mm. I... Well, I do, I kind of paint also, um, more like abstracty mm. oral paintings. Um, I, I mean, I craft, but I don't have one craft that I love to do. Name them all. Um, uh, needle punching was really fun for a bit. I mean, I can, I can see in my, I've got a ukulele up there that hasn't been played in a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, well, but then we're, just very, we're, we're serial hobbyists, I think. Yeah. Right? Like I it's like, like to tinker. Yeah. It's like, you know, what, what are we passionate about? We have our little affair with the, the thing. And then we're like, see, ya, we're on to our next lover, craft lover. <laughs> yeah. We're kind of promiscuous crafters. It is. Uh. Um, Will you tell us the name of your Etsy site so everybody can go to your Etsy site shop? It's just um, Katie Vernon is the -E shop name. Mm -hmm. Good. That's easy. easy to remember. Um, so, well, before we sign off, I just want to remind everybody next week is the webinar with six artists and me. And they are going to be talking about what they've worked on for the past four intensive days with on their children's book. They can't reveal too much, but they're going to reveal some tasty tidbits on process and media and all the kinds of goodness that they are doing in our week long residency for six of my artists. Don't forget our webinars, these webinars, it's a 13 part series. Go to our um, homepage and get a link to the replay of Mara's, our first one, which was two weeks ago. They're pretty much every Thursday at 1230, but we skip a few when I, I'm not available. Um, uh, art directors, if you would like a copy of the Artivities book, please email us at info at lillarogers.com or lilla at lillarogers.com. We will be getting you one at some point anyway, but in case you're, and, and make sure you are on our mailing list, lil, uh, mailing list. What is our, what is our mailing list? Kim, what's our mailing? Well, go to the website and click on get on the newsletter list. Um, so that's how you get on there. Follow us on Instagram. Katie, what's your Instagram handle? Um, Katie Vernon Art. And then I have a Katie Vernon painting for the other stuff. But Katie Vernon Art is where you can see my illustration jobs. And that's where I let my crazy mind go. So 
so great. People are saying it was very inspiring, very motivating. It was. Yay. This was, was really so awesome. This was so great, Katie V. Yay. So great. You're just, you have so much to offer. And of course, your work is spectacular. Art directors, editors, please contact us. And again, if you are interested in getting the um, private viewing with the six artists next uh, Saturday, please email me, lilla at lillarogers.com or info, go to the website, whatever's easy, and let us know because we are going to um, have this just for art directors and editors in the children's market, children's books, children's toys, all that. There's going to be texts that they've written under my, my mentorship, and uh, they'll be making art, uh, probably at least one double page spread, maybe two, maybe a character sheet. So it will be really great. Thank you everyone for watching. We really enjoyed your comments and talking to you. And thank you so much, Katie V. Oh, we thank will, you, Lilla. We will chat again soon. All right. Bye.